Terry D-Lab, welcome to part two of the Wang's amplifier repair and updates. Okay, so we've replaced the tube sockets, have a fresh set of tubes in it, installed master volume and bias test points plus adjustment without having to pull the chassis. See what you think. So I've got the three 9-pin Michael X sockets installed for the 12AX7s. Now to install these, I had to get the clocking correct so they'd line up with the wiring on the eyelet board. You can see these holes here that were from the original sockets, okay? So not only did these new Michael X's not clock correctly, but also the spacing of the holes are different. So keep that in mind when you change out those porcelain sockets with these. What we're going to do is remove one socket at a time, okay? So you obviously have to take all the wiring off, right, and get the socket out of here. Clear the wiring, make sure you're not going to hit anything with that drill. So my recommendation is you do one at a time, right? Because the other one is a roadmap for how the first socket is wired. So we're going to start with this socket here that's underneath the speaker jacks because it actually has less wiring than the first socket, right? Because this has the filament wires that hit it, and then that one's paralleled off of it. So this one would be a little bit easier for me to do and show you the process. So first, we'll get these uh, speaker jacks out of the way. You've got to be a little bit careful. There's a couple spacer washers here that are just going to fall everywhere when you pull it out. But get that up out of the way, and then you see we have clear access to the first socket, right? So take your old soldering iron, and these wires are actually just kind of push through the holes, right? That's kind of like how Marshall did the earlier amps. I'm not a big fan of that. I like more of a mechanical connection, but the Marshall amps are still playing, right? And they're kind of old. <clears throat> so I guess it's no big deal. But probably when I rewire the new sockets, I'll put a little bit of a J-hook for a mechanical connection. So the next task is to change the output tube socket. So you can see I've already done one. This is actually a Marshall type socket, which this circuit is pretty close to. So it replaces this porcelain type one here. Okay. What's nice is the screw pattern here for mounting lines right up. But what doesn't line up is the OD. So this guy is about an inch, and this one is about an inch and a sixteenth. So you have to kind of round it out a little bit. How do you do that? Well, you got to use one of these big stepper bits. This guy would do the job. Unfortunately, it's about a $40 bet. I've already installed this one, so let me take the underside and show you how that went. Here's the wiring of the first socket complete. You can see that I actually soldered the little current shunt resistor to the frame of the socket rather than relying on the hardware to make that ground connection. I figured that would be a little more secure. Everything else is ready to go on that side. Now, I need to get under this one, desolder it, and do the same thing. That one's going to be a little more time consuming. So, what I have to do is remove all the wiring. Get everything out of the way because that big drill bit has to go through that hole and open it up and you don't want it to hit your wiring so you have to be very cautious. Alright so I've got it unwired. Now we're going to have to flip it upside down top side and run that stepper bit through this hole to open it up to the right diameter. In case you're wondering here is the diameter of the stock sockets. Okay. And then we're going to open it up to this dimension for these Marshall sockets. So it's not a lot, but if you don't have the stepper bit, you try to do that with a Dremel tool and grind it out, it's going to be a disaster. So you want to take some oil and make sure that stepper bit is well lubed because this metal has a tendency to stick into your drill bit and cause problems. So we're going to open this guy up. All right. 
So remember, doing this to your amplifier may possibly void the warranty. However, you're going to get long life out of the better quality sockets. All right, I'm through. I had to go all the way through with that drill, okay? So now the new sockets, remember they're coming in from underside, but they'll drop right in. And the nice thing is, is the screw hole dimensions match up. So I've got the hole opened, and we ended up with a few burrs here from the drill bit. So I have to remove those. But that's okay because I also want to take where these holes here are for mounting of the socket. I want to make that bare metal to provide a good ground connection. Initially, they had trapped some lock washers between the socket and the chassis. However, the paint was still there. So good practice is get the metal bare before you mount your socket if you want to rely on that for the ground for pins 1 and 8 of the socket. Well, there she is, D-Bird. I did all this with my Dremel tool. If you try to do that by hand with sandpaper, I guess it could be done, but it's going to take a long time. Next step, we'll get the new socket mounted. Get him screwed in there and wire it up like we did the other side. Be very careful when you do this, okay? Make sure that every wire is exactly where it should be. Take the time. Measure it with your own meter. You don't want to screw this up or you're going to ruin your amp. Well, there they are, both tube sockets are installed and wired up. Yeah, there's some additional things in here. This is a master volume post inverter type system that the owner asked me to put in. Also installed a bias pod here, and there's actually a test point down there you can't see. I'll show you on the top of the chassis to make it to where, you know, you change your output tubes. You don't have to pull the chassis out to set your bias. Kind of a nice little feature. But the next thing that you want to do is take an ohm meter and buzz out all these pins and make absolutely sure that everything is going where it should be going. Because if you get that wrong, there's like 400 volts there, guys, that are going to wipe out your tubes and ruin your day. Real quick now, we know that pins 1 and 8 go to ground through my 1 ohm current shunt. So that should be the same on both tubes, which it is. We also know that we have filaments on 2 and 7 with the center tap to ground. So they should also show resistance to ground. Oops. Anyway, they do. Okay. Now for the critical ones. Pin 3 is your plate voltage. Okay. It's going to go through the output transformer. So if I went from this 3 to this 3, I should show resistance. I got about 200 ohms. Now, you may say, well, that might be something else. Well, you know what? If I go to the first capacitor, you'll see 105 ohms on that guy. And about 90 on that guy. Okay? Which tells me that the center tap is seeing the two pin 3s. And the center tap is going to the high voltage. So that's good. All right? Now, we'll go to pin 4. Okay? Uh, we're at 2K. So if I go, you see these two 1K resistors? If I go to the two pin 4s, look at there. I've got 1.982K, which tells me that I have to go from here to here on 6. they got continuity. Okay? Because the screen voltage is using pin 6 as a landing base, right? So the two 6s are hooked together through the 1K over here to pin 4. So that's good, right? Pin 5s, we know that those are a signal, okay? And those are a given. They go up here to my master volume control. You can see those, so they're pretty obvious. So it appears as though everything is good. The only thing, other thing you'd want to do is take your meter, obviously, go to ground, and you want to touch all the wires that shouldn't be to ground. We know that the filament will see something, we know that 1 and 8 will see something, but plate should not, screen should not, and there is our signal in. You heard a beep, that's just because it charged some caps, but they're both open. You do that on both sides, 
everything's cool. So in my opinion, this thing is safe to fire up. So the amp is powered up, just filaments at this time, no high voltage applied. Tubes are glowing, which is a good sign, right? Now remember I told you I installed a bias test point, right? So that is looking at one of the one ohm resistors going through one tube so that we can see the current, okay? That is my bias adjustment, okay? So let's say you just put in some new tubes. Got my meteoroid, pop him in there. Have my ground hooked to the chassis. Flip on the plate voltage, and there it is. There's your idle current, about 31 milliamps, right? So you take your adjustment, you can tweak that into whatever you want. So that's a lot nicer than having to pull the chassis out every time that you want to set your bias. Plus, this allows you to periodically check your bias if you think your tubes are getting soft. Easy way to do a wellness check if you say, well, they're getting a little weak, I'm going to boost her up a little bit and get a little more use out of those tubes. But this gives you a way to monitor it. How cool is that? So I have all the new tube sockets installed and wired up. There's the new octo sockets. We have a bias test point now. This is your bias adjustment for the final output tubes and a master volume. So here are the old tubes. And I'm going to install new tubes, new set of EL34s and the Savtech LPS Type 12AX7s. And then we're going to give this thing a final checkout. So let's do the final checkout of the Wang's amp. I'm using my D-Lab audio test set to simulate a speaker and to provide a signal to the scope through the dummy load function. We've got a meter here set up looking at the bias audio generator to simulate my input. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn on the standby. You can see my idle current, about uh, 38 milliamps. Okay, now I could take the bias set. I can adjust that down to 36, whatever I want. We'll just leave it there for now for the test. So I'm going to come up channel one, see your signal on the scope, see my bias jumping up a little bit because the tube's pulling current. But look at that sine wave. And you can see my power output up here. Nice, clean, stable sine wave. Now if you remember in the first video, I changed socket number two that was damaged. And even though the amp passed a signal, there was still noise and jitter in that signal. That's because the other tube sockets also had an issue, okay? We don't have any issues now. So that's why it's best if you see one socket doing that, change them all, okay? So now we have all new sockets, all new tubes in the amp. Signal looks great. The other feature that I want to point out is, of course, you have your channel one input here, which provides the output, right? But this amp also has the master volume installed, so you can also change the volume level to the output tubes. This is a post inverter master volume. Okay, the same type you would see on Triode Electronics site. It uses a dual 250k pot. So that allows you to drive your preamp harder while attenuating the power to your output tubes to get that desired sound that you guys like. So in case you're interested, here is a close-up of the bias pot and the post inverter master volume pot that's been installed. Now the bias pot just has these two blue wires that come up here and go from here to here and what used to be there before was this pot. Okay, So this was the original bias pot so I simply unsoldered that and put in a 25k chassis mount type pot Okay, to give you that functionality up above. And of course the bias test point is buried up here between the two output tubes. So you have to pull the speaker jacks out to get that guy in there. And then if you want to see how the master volume pod is wired, just take a look at triodelectronics.com. It's in there step by step. Here is a live operational check of the Wang's amp. I was gonna have somebody come over here and play it, but unfortunately I've been snowed in for the last two days. So I'm gonna use the CD player 
with this non-copyright music. <laughs> See what it sounds like. Here we go. cabinet that has two Celestian 12s in it. Alright, so that's a wrap on the Wang's amplifier. Seems to be good to go. New tube sockets and of course new tubes always help. Ready to return to the owner.